Our today's topic is photoprotective mechanisms in plants. Light is essential for photosynthesis, which supports most life on Earth. Photosynthetic organisms, including plants, algae, and uh, cyanobacteria, use light energy to drive the oxygenic photosynthesis. However, when in excess, light can be dangerous for the photosynthetic apparatus because it can cause photooxidative damage and decrease the efficiency of photosynthesis because of photo inhibition. To avoid net photo inhibition, plants have developed diverse photoprotection uh, mechanisms such as light avoidance associated with movement of leaves and chloroplast, then screening of photoradiation and synthesis of antioxidant molecules and enzymes, then quenching of singlet and triplet excited states of chlorophyll and repair processes for damaged photosystem 2 and photosystem 1 reaction center. Today, we will discuss only two photoprotective mechanisms light avoidance associated with the movement of leaves and chloroplast and screening of photoradiation and synthesis of antioxidant molecules and enzyme next two mechanisms we will discuss in our next class so first is light avoidance associated with the movement of chloroplast when plants are exposed to high light intensity high leaf temperature and high air to leaf water vapor pressure, pressure deficient. These environmental stresses cause stomatal closure and photoinhibitory damage, leading to midday depression of photosynthesis. Chloroplast avoidance response is considered to be one of the protective responses that mitigate photoinhibitory damage, in which chloroplasts move towards cell wall, parallel to light direction under high light intensity. Chloroplast positioning is essential for the efficient operation of photosynthesis as the chloroplast is the site of photosynthesis. Chloroplasts migrate in response to different light intensities. Under weak light, chloroplasts gather at an illuminated area. Why? To maximize light absorption and photosynthesis rates. This is called the accumulation response. In contrast, chloroplasts escape from strong light to avoid photo damage. This is called avoidance response. Chloroplast avoidance response can be observed under continuous high light means greater than 160 micromole per second square meter of white light and greater than 100 micromole per second square meter of blue light. So, there is some variability depending on the plant species and uh, uh, growth environment. C4 plant and its leaves, if you remember, typically contain two differentiated types of chloroplasts in mesophyll cells and in bundle sheet cells. Chloroplasts do not show avoidance response at normal uh, intensity of light. Normal intensity of light 200 micromole per second square meter. I can see here chloroplast means normal distribution of chloroplast under normal light intensity. But when exposed to continuous high intensity of light, high intensity means 1200 micromole per second square meter. Here mesophyll chloroplast only mesophyll chloroplast redistributed to anticlinal walls means to means parallel to the direction of incident light. I can see here in this second diagram. Under extremely strong light, 4000 micromole per second square meter, chloroplasts move toward the bundle sheet side without the regard to the direction of the incident light. Next is leaf movement, avoiding exposure to light. Several plant species are able to move their leaves in response to direct sunlight. This is called heliotropism. The leaf movement is also uh, affected by ambient growth conditions, 
such as light intensity, temperature, and water, and also uh, nutrient availability. The heliotropism displays two forms. First is diaheliotropism. Here, leaf lamina becomes oriented at an angle perpendicular to the direction of the light. And second is paraheliotropism. Here, leaf lamina becomes oriented at an angle parallel to the direction of light. Now, paraheliotropism is associated with minimizing the absorption of solar radiation and uh, avoids absorbing excessive light energy for photosynthesis. Leaf movement might also act to avoid inhibition of the repair of photodamaged photosystem 2 by reducing ROS, means reactive oxygen species. ROS production is associated with the excess light uh, absorption by the photosynthetic pigments and electron transport, transport reactions to oxygen at photosystem 1 and photosystem 2. Now next is screening of damaging radiation uh, means UV and uh, visible light. So under sunlight, plants are uh, unavoidably exposed to UV radiations that damage DNA, RNA and proteins. Photosystem 2 is one of the major target of UV damage because it is surrounded by a lipid milieu. Under sunlight, approximately one third of photo damage uh, to photosystem 2 is associated with UV wavelengths. Although uh, visible light damages photosystem 2 less effectively than does uh, ultraviolet radiation, means uh, UV light, visible light is more abundant in the solar spectrum than, than is UV light. Therefore, screening of visible light might also be able to prevent photo damage of means it prevent photo damage to photosystem 2. To cope with UV damage, plants accumulate UV screening compounds including mycosporin like amino acids in the case of algae, phenolic compounds like phenolic acids, flavonoid and uh, anthocyanin, then alkaloids, alkaloids, betalins, for example, and carotenoids uh, in the leaf epidermis. Screening compounds protect photosystem too, either by reducing the penetration of incident UV radiation or acting as quenchers of reactive oxygen species. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you.